Hello, this is Mark Anderson from Cali Community College, and we're going to be looking today at some hyperbolas with y-intercepts, not x-intercepts. So if you watch the previous two videos I've made in the series, starting off with ellipses that had um, centers at the origin, and the hyperbola with y-intercepts, this equation is going to look very similar to the others. Um, we've got y squared over b squared, but this case we have x squared over a squared, and these are being subtracted and set equal to 1. So now we have these beautiful hyperbolas, but in this case these are going to have y-intercepts since they will cross the y-axis, and those intercepts are going to be 0 comma b and also 0 comma negative b. The asymptotes are going to be y equals b over a, x, and also y equals negative b over a, x as well. So what we will do is start off with this equation here. We will look at its two y-intercepts, which is going to be 0, 5, and also 0, negative 5. And the y-intercepts of, or excuse me, the asymptote lines are these lines that the hyperbola will get infinitely close to but never touch, um, 5 eighths x and also y equals negative 5 eighths x. So if you're taking notes here, this would be a good a chance to copy these down because I'm going to move to the bottom of my graph paper here, um, but I'm not going to be able to take any of this with me. So this deletes and I move down to the bottom, giving myself just a little bit of room to write because here's what I have so far. What I have so far is I have my two y-intercepts, which is 5 and negative 5, here and here. I am then going to have my intercepts of 5 eighths x. So that means y equals 5 eighths x. So I start with the origin and move up 5 and over 8, which is about right here. Putting a nice dotted line, this shows my asymptote line. Um, and then I'm going to also do the same thing here with y equals negative 5 eighths, so down 5 over 8 here. And that's going to make a nice dotted line going in this direction. And I'll extend it in this direction too. The dangers of freehanding is that you might actually not do it as accurate as you'd like, so you might actually have your dot cross this. But that was, that's just basically a graphing error, and it's not actually due to the equation. So now I have my x or my y intercepts here, but I really should find two more points so I can see about how far away these um, lines are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the number 10 in for my y. So again, remembering the equation is y squared over 25 minus x squared over 64 equals 1. If I plug 10 in for y, this should tell me what possible x values I could have to draw from my equation. So now I have 100 over 25 minus x squared over 64 is equal to 1. If I simplify that, it turns into 4 minus x squared over 64 equals 1. Subtract 4 from both sides, and what I get is I get negative x squared over 64 is equal to negative 3. Multiplying both sides by negative 64, which would not only simplify the 64 but the, and the negative as well, I get x squared is now equal to 192. Taking the square root of both sides, x is equal to approximately plus or minus 13.87, or 87 hundredths. So if my y is 10, my x is going to be 13, so it goes beyond the graph just a little bit here. But this gives me my nice hyperbola arc that I need for my graph. So there is my hyperbola on top, and because of symmetry, from down below will also go to about 13, which is this dot and this dot here. <laughs> and here we go, making my nice little sand of time, little hourglass shape here. Um, so yeah, so there's my nice little shape here and here. Um, and that is the first of two problems that we will do in this section. All right, so for my last problem here, we're gonna look at y squared minus uh, y squared over 16 minus x squared over 4. The y-intercepts are going to be, hold on a second, that's going to be 4 comma 0, oh sorry, not that, it's going to be 0 comma 4 and also 0 comma negative 4. 
Now these numbers are coming from this 16 right here. We have to take the square root of it, which gives us a plus or minus 4. And now what we will do is we will find our asymptote lines. Our asymptote lines are going to be y equals our b over a, and that would be 4 over 2, but we won't leave it that way, no. Our asymptote line is going to be 1 half x. And on the other side, this is going to be y equals negative 1 half x. So this would be another good time to copy down your points here and your two asymptote lines, because as we move down to the graph, this is all going to disappear. All right, so moving down to the graph, giving myself a little bit of room to write, we're now going to plot the two intercepts, which are on the y-axis as 4 and negative 4. We are also now going to do the asymptote lines, which is y equals 2x and y equals negative 2x. So up 1 over 2. This makes a very, very sharp line that goes up like so. And you may want to um, use a straight edge here again. I'm freehanding it. So there might be some error. Um, and then negative 2 is just you know, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, so there we go, there's one line, there's another, like so. Alright, so now what we will do is we are going to plug in 10 on my y and figure out what my x's are possible so we can see the curvature of this line without slopping it or doing a freehand. Alright, so I've got my calculator at the ready here to do some equation solving. So here we go. We're going to plug in 10 into my y. So that's going to give me 100 over 16 minus x squared over 4 is equal to, ne to positive 1. I'm going to subtract from both sides the 100 over 16. So 1 minus 100, excuse me, 1 minus 100 divided by 16 is going to give me a negative 5.25. So now I have negative x squared over 4 is equal to negative 5.25. If I multiply both sides by negative 4, this eliminates not only the 4 but the negative. So my x squared is going to be equal to 21. Now, to get the next piece of the answer, it would be in my best interest to take the square root of 21. Now remembering when we take the square root, it's the plus or minus of that answer. So x is going to be equal to plus or minus 4 point, sorry, 4.58. Whoa, it's not writing. 58. There we go. So we're going to go to 10 and go over 4 and a half, or roughly 4.6. And we're going to go roughly over about 4 and a half here. And that gives us our nice curve on the parabola. And down here too, we're going to go to 4.58 and 4.58 as well. And that also gives us a nice curve on the parabola. All right, well, thank you for watching. And again, I strongly recommend that you watch my other two videos dealing with parabolas and, or sorry, hyperbolas and ellipses and how all these equations, very similar uh, in style, produce some very radically different graphs. All right, thank you for thank you again for watching.